it's very easy to live life from the outside in. Especially when you've been doing that most of your life. When you have gotten used to getting validation from outside of yourself, you've gotten used to live in for approval. Hikikomori is a form of social isolation or social withdrawal. It was described first in Japan by a Japanese psychiatrist. And it tends to be a more severe form of social withdrawal. Isolation, withdrawing from people, is a defense mechanism. When someone is faced with some sort of stress or series of stresses, we have to react and respond to that. And one of the ways is to get away from it. To literally move away from the source of stress. It can be really hard to reintegrate and come back out. Call somebody. I have to be looking for you before you remember your mother. Kay, it's not right. Hikikomori is going to vary across country and community and culture. And that speaks to the powerful influence of our families, of our social circles, of our social structures whether it's a pressure or a reaction from those around us, that will affect how each person lives through the experience of hikikomori. Lately, I've become accustomed to the way the ground opens up and envelopes me each time I go out to walk the dog or oh, the broad-edged, silly music the wind makes when I run for the bus. Things have come to that. What if it doesn't work out? It's almost that needing that validation and almost needing it for someone outside of themselves. If I don't have it from here, then do I really have permission to go ahead and pursue what it is that I want? One of the benefits of taking the time to reconnect to yourself is you're going within. And you're asking yourself questions that only you have the answer because it's coming from you. It is your truth. And it's very hard to hear that when you're around a lot of the noise. And now, each night I count the stars. And each night I get the same number. And when they will not come to be counted, I count the holes they leave. 
Nobody sings anymore. And then, last night, I tiptoed up to my daughter's room and heard her talking to someone. And when I opened the door, there was no one there. Only she on her knees, peeking into her own clasped hands. For individuals that don't feel like they're following the socially approved trajectory, it can be incredibly stressful. Talking with the family members, there's this incredible reluctance and shame that is often there. And as time passes, loneliness builds. The antidote to shame is connection. We are wired for connection. Community is such a massive pillar for human flourishing. That is where your support network comes from. It shouldn't have to come from two people having the same experiences. It comes from someone being able to enter another person's reality and connect from that place. It's very easy to get caught up almost molding yourself to fit into spaces that you might not necessarily belong in. Loneliness acts as a signal to the body to reconnect with people. It takes courage to step forward and say, I need help. It's great to develop regular practices whereby you're cultivating that relationship to self going within and then going outside, but still being connected to self. 